I don't get it. The lineup, except for one, wasn't that bad. You got the same back four, minus Kennedy because of injury. Can't really help that. Uh, the, th the three attacking, you've got Hazard, Oscar, William. Okay. Traore up top because Koss is injured. Okay. Then you got Mikel and Matic. Doesn't make any sense. Why would you have two defensive midfielders at home against Stoke? Why? Why would you not have an attacking midfielder? But, that, you know, despite that, I was like, eh, you know, we may be a little bit shaky defensively. We may not get as many chances, but it's okay. I don't mind this lineup. Halftime, we're up one nothing. I'm like, see, it's it's going okay. It's not great, but it's going okay. Second half, the changes start happening. The Zard comes off, Loftus Cheek comes on. I like to see Loftus Cheek. I get you want to rest Hazard for midweek. I'm okay with it. Traore comes off, Remy comes on. You've got Pato on the bench. And Remy does nothing when he comes on the field. He is just, he's, he's another Mikel. He just kind of is there, but isn't really doing anything. Then you bring Fabregas on for Matic. So that's been my review of Chelsea versus Stoke. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you want. No, but seriously, I could just stop right there because that explains it all. Right there, that one decision explains exactly what the hell happened today. You took Matic off and put on Fabregas with 10 minutes to go. It wasn't, it wasn't Mikel and, it wasn't Matic and Fabregas and you put Mikel on for Fabregas at the end of the game to make it more defensive. No, you took off Matic the better of the two defensive midfielders, and put on Fabregas. I was not surprised when Stokes scored a few minutes later. It, j it was the same exact reaction I had when he put on Mikel last week for Oscar and put Mikel and Matt. I knew Norwich was about to get a, a good chance, and they scored off of it. I was not surprised at all when Stoke leveled things up because that is the stupidest, dumbest decision you could have possibly made. You could have made literally any other decision. But taking Matic off is the worst one. You could have put Begovic on the field somewhere. Not Matic, but you could have put him on the field somewhere. You could have put Miazga on on the field for Ivanovic or Cahill. You could have put, I, I don't, I can't even think of another one that's close to as dumb as putting, having Mikel on the field, but you could have done anything else. And it would not have been as stupid as taking Matic off the field with 10 minutes to go. Because there's no reason for it. You're not resting him because it's only 10 minutes. He's already played 80 minutes. It doesn't mean anything. It's like taking a guy off with one minute left to go. You're not really resting him for midweek. So it doesn't make any sense to say, oh, I was resting. No, you just took him off and put Fabregas on for some reason. There, there's no logic behind it at all. And the more I think about it, the more it frustrates me because even even if you put Fabregas on for Mikel, it still wouldn't make, it would make a bit more sense because Mikel is kind of, a cone out there, so at least you have a, at least you're not playing a man down anymore. But even then, it's like you're putting on an attacking player for a defensive player. Even the theory of it doesn't make any sense because you're a goal up. But to take off Matic, it doesn't make a lick of sense. And the thing is, at this point, you're kind of already playing two men down, two and a half. Mikel doesn't count as a player. He's just, he, he's awful. Like, the more I watch him, the more I'm just like, that they must not be watching tapes after the game. Like, how hard is it to pull up the tape and be like, okay, he's got to stop. Like, how hard is that? You've got Remy on the field, who is practically a non-player. Like, any, he's got speed and it never uses it. 
Like, it would be great if he could use his feet, but he never does. His touch is awful. He doesn't challenge for the ball at all. And then you've got Baba, who kind of counts as a half player, because at times he's okay, and then other times you're just like, why is he even on the field? Because he makes such stupid decisions. So you're technically playing two and a half men down, in my standards. And then you bring off Matic, who is the one holding up the midfield as far as our defensive part goes. Stokes already getting chances, okay? Like, they were getting chances from the beginning of the game. And to take off Maddich is just like saying, all right, you guys want to go? Here you go. It's stupid. Absolutely stupid. I could rage about it for another 10, 15, probably another hour, to be honest. But, I mean, that, that was my whole frustration summed up right there. Taking him off cost us the win. And so now that's another two points dropped under Gus Hiddink. People are for some reason still saying, oh yeah, let's keep Gus Hiddink. Why? That's 14 points that he's dropped since he's taken over. 14 points dropped under Hiddink. And this, this one is by far the worst of the points dropped. Because we had the game won. It was, it was such an easy game to go and win. We were getting chances left and right. All you really had to do was just put on somebody to finish those chances because we didn't really have a finisher. And you didn't. You put on Remy. <laughs> I hate you. So that's my frustration with hitting, but he's not the only one to blame because honestly just this entire game was really poor from everybody on the field. I mean, William was had the worst game of the season today. I said he's had the worst game of the season before. But today was really bad. His passes were awful. He tried to dribble way too much. Lost the ball that gave up the goal. It was just poor from him. Espilicueta had the worst game of the season, in my opinion. Arnautovic just kept turning him. Every single time he went in for a challenge, he went diving in and gets turned. And now he's out of position. And I'm just, why? <laughs> You're a better defender than this. And for the first 20 to 30 minutes, they were not involved in the game at all. They were slow. They weren't pressuring well they weren't moving the ball well it was bad it's the worst not the worst they've looked all season but since hitting took over it's probably the worst that I've seen them aside from the 0-0 man you draw but that's a different story but it just it, it wasn't enough they were getting beat way too easily they weren't pressuring well they weren't stepping together as a team you had one man step and then get passed around another man steps now he's passed around it's not good enough and it's weird to see how last week against Norwich, before you put Mikel on, they were playing well. They were doing well. They were pressuring well. They moving the ball very well. And that's away from home. When you're at home, you should be dominating the game. And they were not at all. They looked like they were on the back foot for majority of the first half. They finally took control of the game, got the goal, second half until, you know, Later on, until pretty much until Remy came on, they were still doing a well, good job of controlling the game. Then you bring Remy on, you lose the attacking force. You bring on um, Fabregas for Manich, now you've lost your defending force. And I'm just going to be honest, people are talking about how great Cahill and Ivanovic are doing. They're not. They, they've made some good stops every now and then, but overall, they have just not been good enough for your defensive pair. Like, when you think about Terry and Cahill or Terry and Zuma, it looks solid. They don't look sketchy. They don't look like they're on the back foot. They don't look like they're scrambling to defend. They look solid. When it's Cahill and Ivanovic, it's scary <laughs> to watch. They, they're scrambling around the field. Cahill tried some stupid bike out of the back today and got lucky the guy with all, was off sides. So it's just not good enough. And... It, it needs to improve. I don't know where. I, part of it does come from hitting, making stupid decisions. But there's still, even with hitting, making the stupid decisions, there's still a lack of effort and a lack of knowledge of what to do. Um, so, I don't know. It's just all around it's not good enough and it's frustrating to watch as a fan. Because, obviously, Champions League is kind of out of the question as far as qualification now. Um, so the best way to do it is to win the Champions League 
which is probably <laughs> it's not as impossible as making it in the top four in the Premier League, but it's still kind of as hard. Um, so that's that's not why I want to see them win games. I just want to see them finish in a respectable position. Honestly, I'd like to see them challenge for Europa because that's possible. They are very close to 6th, 7th, all that stuff. So just winning a few games would really get them in that in that spot. I mean, you look at... I said 14 points dropped. I'll pull up the table really fast. And last time I checked it was... We had, we had 12 points dropped. We would have been tied with Man City going into this weekend if we hadn't dropped all those 12 points. And some of those you can say, well, they're difficult games, so... You know, I can kind of understand that. But there's some, like today, like against West Brom, like against Man U at home, where we should have won and we didn't. We gave it away late. Uh, the game against Everton, we got it back late, but we really shouldn't have. It should have been, we should have taken it to them and we didn't do it. So we had to rescue a point instead of, you know, they, they are now rescuing a point. So, if we have 14 points, yeah, we'd be in third, above Arsenal. We'd have 54 points, we'd be two points above Arsenal with Man City. Yeah, that's where, that's, that's, my, that's my problem, is that all those points are dropped. We could be in a third place spot right now. And I don't expect them to win every game. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. Obviously, it's, it's very hard to win every game. But several of those points were winnable games, and it wasn't done because Hiddink is making dumb decisions. It's frustrating to see. And it's even more frustrating when dumb people go on Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and like, we need to keep Hiddink. He's not a good manager. He's not doing a good job here. He's doing an okay job. Yeah, we haven't lost the game in the Premier League under him, but we're dropping too many points. And it's because he continues to play Mikel. It's because he continues to yank Matic off the field when we need a defensive midfielder in there who's going to do the job well. It's stupid decisions like that that make me think, no, not, not hitting. He's fine for now. We don't really want to challenge in the Premier League. You know, well, we want to, but we're not really thinking that's a good possibility. So he's fine for now. I'll take him. But as far as a long-term situation, he would hurt us more than he help us. Um, so, that's my opinion of today. Um, not, on, on the on the positive side, good goal from Traore, and it was nice to see Loftus-Cheek, although he at times looked a little bit hesitant and not really pushing himself to go and get back behind the ball and you know help defensively, but it was nice to finally get to see him play, even though it's taken way too long under hitting to see him. But, you know, those, those are two positives that you can draw from the game, so it's not like it's all negative, um, but it's still frustrating. So that's my opinion. Let me know what you think. What do you want to see changed? Uh, what do you want to see going into the PSG game midweek? And what are your hopes and aspirations for the rest of the season? Let me know down below. Leave a like and subscribe for more Chelsea content, and I'll see you in the next game. Peace out.